How's it going everyone? Andrew Robinson here back at it with another Max MSP tutorial video. In this video we are returning to audio and we are talking about maybe the most essential audio object in Max MSP. This object is so simple to use but knowing how it works from a technical perspective will allow you to do so many amazing things in Max including building high level complex sounding synthesizers in a very easy and modular way. And that object that I am talking about is phaser. Yes, phaser. If you type in P-H-A-S-O-R tilde, you will create a phaser object, which is basically a sawtooth wave signal. It's got two inlets and one outlet. If you look at the left inlet, it says frequency or time period. It takes a signal, float, or symbol. And if you look at the right inlet, it's a float value for phase. Our output says output ramp cycle from zero to one. That is actually very important to remember. For what we're going to go over if we attach it to an audio output such as our speakers um, we're going to hear that really gnarly sawtooth sound i'm just going to turn the frequency up and that's the phaser sound and if we attach if we attach that into a live.scope object which is a great object for looking at our audio signals. I'm gonna detach this from the audio output just so I can talk and we can hear what I'm saying at the same time. I'm gonna turn that frequency up again and you'll see we are now getting that sawtooth wavelength where it is going from zero, which is the middle of our live scope because live scope by default shows us a range from negative one to positive one. So zero to one is the middle up to the top and it's just going over and over like that forever in that cycle. And that's all phaser does but you can do so much with this and why why is this so useful this ramp that we are looking at right here it's because it is a unipolar waveform signal what that means is it is a waveform that just goes from zero to one we are staying in the positive range if you ever hear anyone talking about audio signal processing stuff and you hear the term unipolar that's what they're talking about it's just in that positive range and it goes zero to one, which is super valuable because that's a normalized range of values. So you can take that and you could scale that to anything or use any kind of math formula to manipulate it into different stuff, which is also something we're about to do. Real fast, I'm just gonna show you what I'm talking about with the scale. You can do scale tilde, which is similar to our regular scale object. It just works in the audio signal domain. And we could put in our low range and our high end of the input range and then scale that to whatever range we want to scale that to. So you could say something like 220 which is an A note and then we could do 800 which is also an A note about two octaves up and if we patch the output of phaser into that we could patch this into something like a cycle object uh, which will give us a sine wave and it will be a sine wave at these frequencies. So you see how even just playing with that, that was a really simple setup, can already afford some pretty interesting sound and notes. Um, and it was really simple. It was just phaser scale cycle. But that's not the only thing we can do with phaser. This phaser ramp ability of ours is so useful for a lot of different reasons. One of those other reasons being that because this is a phaser, it's an audio signal object, we are working in the audio signal domain, you get more sample accurate timing, which is super, super useful with audio stuff. If you're trying to build a high level complex synth that like plays notes really fast, or you're trying to build a plugin that like, you know, just reprocesses all the sound going on, um, you want high, high sample accurate timing. Unfortunately, regular Max objects such as Metro that don't work in our audio signal domain can sometimes misfire at the wrong interval. If you've got a lot of computer processing power stuff going on in your max patch and things are, you know, just banging all over the place, it's possible, you know, the metro might be off. Um, and But with audio signal, you get sample accuracy and it's so nice. You'll never have to worry about things misfiring at the wrong time. Everything will always be the right time. And that is one of the beauty of doing things in the audio signal domain. And because our phaser is a unipolar ramp from zero to one, it can control so much, you can scale it to do so much, you can manipulate it into all these things, and everything's gonna be in time. Uh, the more you can map into just a single phaser ramp and have everything controlled by one phaser ramp, the more complex sounding stuff you can do with 
minimal amounts of change. But we're gonna work our way up to all that stuff. Let's just start again at the basics with some of these things. The one thing I have been mentioning is you can manipulate phasers into other audio signal ramps. And there may be a lot of reasons you want to do that. It is a very valuable method to get some of those high level sounding audio synthesizers that I'm talking about. Um, so let's just look at how we can turn this phaser ramp, which again is just going zero to one, into other audio ramps. The first one we're going to start with is the square wave. Um, now a square wave is also known as a pulse wave and it's basically rather than ramping in a value from zero to one over a certain amount of time, the value is either going to be zero or one. It's not anywhere in between, it's just one or the other on or off. And it's actually very easy to make square waves out of phaser ramps. All we're gonna do right now is copy and paste this over so you can command C, command V it. Um, we'll give it a frequency value so we can see it moving. And basically we're just going to say greater than or equal to audio signal. Um, so put the tilde in there, um, 0.5. And we're gonna slide the output of our phaser into that and the output of this greater than object into our live.scope. And you can see now we have these square wave shapes. And that's because the output of the greater than object is either zero or one, depending on if the value is greater than 0.5 or not. And that's all a square wave is. It's just zero or one, so this gives us a square wave. And the fact that we can easily manipulate this phaser ramp into a square wave with just very minimal objects is very useful. And what's cool about this feature too is because we're like building it ourselves, you can manipulate the width of the pulse of our square wave simply by changing this threshold value to something else. If we set it to like 0.1, we have much smaller pulses for our square wave. Actually, it's the opposite. We have larger pulses. We can't, it's just hard to see because it's set to one. So it's like right at the top of this line here. Um, but the, the value of that one being on is now longer. And as we turn this up, that's going to get shorter and the, the, the length between it being off becomes larger. So we'll have much faster, shorter pulses that way. Um, you can even get really, really fine with it and get some kind of like transient type pulse spikes if you want to. Maybe there's a very good reason for you to need to do that. Um, but that's square wave and that's all it is. And again, it's just a zero or a one. Um, and being it's so easy to just turn this phaser into that square wave. Uh, moving right along, the next wave shape we can turn our phaser into is a triangle wave, which is very similar to a phaser. It's just instead of going only up, it goes up and then comes back down. And to do that, again, we're just gonna copy and paste this thing over. I did it this time by holding down the option key on my keyboard and dragging over. That is a max thing, although I'm sure there is a Windows equivalent. Um, anyways, to make the phaser into a triangle wave, we need to do some kind of math. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to multiply it by a value of two. And remember the tilde has got to be in there so it knows we're in the audio signal domain. By multiplying our phaser ramp by two, it's going to output from a value of zero to two. Um, and you'll see that that is working because now our lines are going way, way above the range that our scope is showing. Um, no worries though. Now that we're going between zero and two, we're going to shift that ramp down a little bit. And to do that, we're just going to subtract an audio signal value of one. That's gonna put our phaser ramp in a range from negative one to positive one. And you can see it, it's working that way. It's the same as this guy over here, um, other than the fact that the Hertz rate is different, it, but now it's the same. And we just have that full range. This is what's referred to as a bipolar waveform. It is in the negative range as well as the positive range. And so yeah, we basically just made a bipolar phaser ramp right now. Um, but if we want to then take this bipolar phaser ramp and make it into a triangle wave, all we gotta do is attach in absolute value and make sure we put the tilde in there. So again, we're staying in the audio domain. And then that negative one is going to get wrapped back around to a positive value. So it's gonna go from zero up to one and then back down to zero and create the triangle wave that we know and love. Now, the last one we're gonna look at here is turning the phaser into a cycle sine wave ramp. And that is also very easy to do. We're just gonna take the phaser and we're going to multiply it by a value. 
a very specific value, that very specific value being 6.28. The reason we are going to multiply by 6.28 is because that is a, a relatively close value to 2 pi. Um, pi being 3.14, 2 pi being 3.14 times 2, which is 6.28. So we're going to patch the phaser into that multiply. We're going to patch that out to our live.scope. And you're going to see we're, again, very far out of the range of that live scope. But that's not a worry. We can now run our audio signal through a sine x tilde, which gives us the signal sine function. And if you run that full 0 to 6.28 uh, pi ramp through a sine formula, it's going to take it and it's going to convert it into the proper uh, sine wave coordinates to actually give us a real legitimate sine wave. This is the same as doing the cycle object, but knowing how to take a phaser and turn it into this cycle, very, very important because this can, this will allow us to build high level complex synthesizers. This works very well with a lot of other basic audio objects in Max MSP. One of those objects being the one I love to use a lot, Groove Tilde. Um, groove tilde works very well with the phaser ramp and any kind of variant audio signal waveform ramp uh, because groove takes an audio signal in order to do its playback. Um, so we're going to just get groove set up real fast. To do that, we need a buffer as well. We need to give the buffer a name. Uh, I'm going to call it Groovy. And we just got to drop an audio sample in there. You can drop whatever audio sample you like. I'm just going to go into our audio tab. I'm going to look for the Jongly drum beat uh because i really like that sample just drag and drop it into the buffer and we'll see that work because if you lock the patch down here double click on buffer you'll see our audio signal is in that buffer so that's good that's in the buffer now we just need to give the name groove the same name as the buffer in this instance it's groovy we'll patch that into our audio output and then the le left inlet is a signal based sample playback increment um, to do audio playback. And as we've seen in other videos, if we just take a sig tilde object in patch that into the inlet, whatever float number value or integer value we send to this sig tilde object, it's just going to convert that into an audio signal. So we can create a float number box. Again, I did that just by pressing F on my keyboard. We can patch that into the sig tilde, lock our patch, click on this and enter one. And that's the drum beat at normal speed because the value, the signal value of one is telling the groove object to play back at the normal playback rate. If you sent a two, it would play twice as fast and it played so fast that it just ended. We're gonna go to the group. We're gonna turn at loop one on. So it'll just loop. So that's playing it twice as fast and you see to turn it off, I am turning it to zero. This the signal value of zero tells the groove to turn off. And likewise, we can continue to mess around with this. We could do 0.5 for half speed. We could do negative one for reverse. So on and so forth. And again, because this is, takes an audio signal value, we can actually just attach the output of this phase object directly into the group. We don't, we don't need the sig object at all. That's a pretty cool sound. What's going on is it's ramping from no playback slowly up to a full speed, and it's doing that in that in that time period, that cycle of the phaser ramp, um, and it's just doing that over and over, and it's creating a really unique, interesting form of playback that is a new sound. Um, honestly, I think this sounds so cool. Like I would definitely be using this in an audio track. Just that audio signal time manipulation is it's sample accurate. So you're getting it right in the moment. And it's 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 just so clean. It's so clean. It's so much easier than if you were trying to do that same thing, but with like a line and then convert it to an audio signal. Again, you might get some of that misfiring, the uh, mistiming of things potentially. But this the, just by t p attaching the phaser object in, you're, that you're not going to have to worry about that. Um, let's just real quick look at what these other audio waveform signals do when attached to the groove object. As we saw with the phaser, it's ramping from zero to one. So you're going to get a lot of that uh, rate change in the sound. But with our square wave, it's only a zero or a one. So it's going to be on or off um, when we attach it in. 
And that's pretty cool because it creates kind of like a stuttering effect. And if you, you know, mess around with the frequency value that it's happening at, you could also create really cool audio effects this way. Right on. Uh, continuing right along, if we look at the triangle, it's going to be pretty similar to the phaser sound. It's just we're also going to get that ramp back down. Um, so let's just listen to that. Also very, very cool. Very, very interesting. And then same thing. We're going to try it with this last one, our uh, phaser built into the sine wave shape. And it's just going to give us more... It's going to be sort of the same effect, but it's going to be gradual, more gradual, a little bit more smoothed out because you can see we get more of a smooth shape than just straight up and down like we do with the triangle. Cool. And, you know, with that, again, we could use that scale object we looked at in the very beginning to scale any of these values, whether it's a uh, unipolar like these objects these three objects are or if it was a uh, you know bipolar in which case this zero would just need to be a negative one and then we could scale that out to like any range of anything that we wanted uh, as well so you know scale our bipolar sine wave here we'll attach that into a news cycle and patch that to our audio output <laughs> so many different forms of like audio tastiness happening and like I said it's super useful to be able to build this all and know that technical knowledge of how we can manipulate this phaser into these other waveforms and there's so many other waveforms we can continue to manipulate this into these are just the most basic ones that I figured would be important to address especially since they all have their own audio objects this is the same thing as a rect tilde this is the same thing as a tri tilde, and this is the same thing as a cycle tilde. But it's very important to know just the technicalness of how to warp these phasers into these other shapes. When you get into higher level audio stuff in Max MSP, like such as Gen, um, some of these objects, like this, don't exist inside Gen tilde. You have to know how to manipulate this phaser into a rec wave if you want to use that kind of square wave shape inside Gen. Um, so one, just super valuable to know for that reason, because uh, once we get into Gen Tilda stuff, like we're going to be doing some very, very high level audio processing. We can, you know, bend the output of this phaser into these wave shapes and like maybe control all of that through an LFO. So you're constantly just getting these morphing wave tones um, that could, you know, be your audio synth or be controlling other things that are outputting the audio like how we saw the phaser and all these objects can control the groove object hopefully this kind of clears up some of that technical basic information to know about phaser uh there i i'm sorry that we didn't really go deep into building anything in this video but it is important for me to talk about this information and just let you guys know about it because one it is kind of the most basic essential st stuff you'll hear talked about in um, audio signal processing, but also just knowing how to do this stuff is going to be very, very important for some of the other higher level audio signal stuff I wanna get into down the line. We're just gonna end the video there. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate that. If you learn anything from this video, please remember to like and subscribe because that is how I best know that you guys learned something. If you guys have any questions or comments about anything, uh, please feel free to leave that in the comment section down below. I will answer your questions when I can. And if you have any suggestions, maybe tor tutorial requests, I'll look at those too. That's going to be it. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.